Welcome everybody to the Overkill Festival. We are Friday, the 3rd of December, and uh, we are here on our beautiful uh, catwalk with Anouk Tan and Manik Hendricks for the first chapter of our uh, symposium program. Uh, first, I will introduce a little bit the, the festival and then tell you why we are here uh, uh, diving into uh, this, this program tonight. And then I will just leave the floor and let our wonderful guests and our wonderful uh, uh, moderator, curators, uh, take you into this uh, uh, program tonight, Digital Togetherness. Mm -hmm. So the Overkill Festival this year uh, for chose the um, collective masquerade. So the, uh, the whole idea and the research is about um, how can we be together when uh, physical uh, distance is imposed to us and how can we learn from these digital uh, spaces and these digital encounters uh, to be together differently, to be together in, uh, in different ways, in better ways, <coughs> but also with different uh, different people from, from different uh, uh, countries, from different uh, communities, and from different backgrounds. So this is what we explored the whole year, and this is what we try to express in the, in the festival yeah. now open since the last weekend. So the festival you can visit um, every day in a physical space in Enschede, if you, if you can come to Enschede. So it's open every day from 12 to 5. Uh, in the shape of an exhibition with games and interactive art and with VR and with workshops. And then in the evening we are uh, online with, uh, with this talks program. Tonight we have a, a little special uh, music program with two live coding acts. And then uh, and this weekend we also celebrate uh, this, this weird uh, togetherness with uh, online and offline sort of fashion show. I'm actually very curious how it will uh, be. Maybe super fan, fun, maybe super lame, but we are totally going for it, so we'll see. And um, but this is about uh, what's happening uh, at the festival, and more specifically about this this program tonight. So this is the fourth uh, chapter. We had so three already three wonderful evenings. You can watch them back on the YouTube channel. And uh, and a bit earlier today, somebody asked me why why are we doing four symposium this year? You crazy? And, uh, and we are a little bit, but uh, actually it was three uh, evening with four guests every time. It was uh, it was very beautiful, and it helped at least me. I hope you and I hope the team also here to go through this very strange uh, festival we're living in. So I hope uh, you enjoy also tonight, and that uh, it will also help us to go through these uncertain times we are we're living in and that it will help us to find ways of being together and online and also uh, in this physical space we share sometimes. Um, so this whole program was, yeah, you can just watch it all back online. I stopped talking and I let Anouk Dan and, uh, and Manik Hendricks introduce this evening and the wonderful artist of today, uh, Anne Orel who made, especially for the festival, um, a face filter, which works with more people together every time someone joined, every time, until three, uh, when people joined, like different things happen. And, um, and you will discover this all together with, with Anne and with all our guests. So have fun tonight and enjoy. Yes, thank you, Marie for that uh, wonderful introduction. We are here indeed at Overkill, Fe Overkill Festival in Enschede, Monique Hendricks and me, Ainuk Tan. Uh, we were asked as co-curators to curate the public program. And indeed, it is the fourth and the last uh, symposium that we, we organize. We have uh, wonderful guests. We start indeed with Anne Horel, then we have a presentation from Lillian Stolk. Uh, then uh, we go into uh, the presentation of Yin Ai Wen, and then we have Martina Stich, who made a platform, we all go, and we also will go there on that platform, so that is very exciting. Like Marie said, we also had three chapters before. The themes were um, um, in queer embodiment, uh, beyond animal, and um, um, pluriform, identities. pluriform identities. I'm just saying it because we had so much fun, right, uh, creating these themes and um, these themes are, are very much consciously about identity, navigating identity, different forms of yourself. How are you online? How are you in the physical? Who can we become? How that relates to queerness? Um, and, and how are we also 
becoming more plural form. So I would definitely recommend you to watch that back. Um, my name is, is Eindhoek Tan, as I just uh, said. I'm a curator, a journalist, um, an advisor, mostly in the cultural sector, and my uh, work practice is, is mostly revolving around identity and appearance and how the relation of those two are also a political and, and societal. So this is what I'm busy with. Um, that also relates to the themes of queerness and decolonial practices. So basically I'm constantly uncovering identity to uh, recreate alternatives basically for a, a society in which not everybody is still equal. Um, that was my introduction and I'm really looking forward to this theme of tonight and I think Monique you will first introduce yourself and also tell something about the theme of, of tonight. Absolutely. Um, so my name is Monique Hendricks. I'm an art historian. I work as a curator, uh, writer and researcher. Uh, and I also work at Lima, the Media Art Institute in Amsterdam as a junior curator. And I w also work with themes um, um, uh, like identity, the body, representation, um, also underground culture camp. Um, so I guess it's been a great match. Yeah, um, yeah we had really. a lot of fun. Uh, and I would love to introduce the theme of the last chapter of this symposium, which is digital togetherness. How can the internet create more systems of togetherness? During the pandemic, we have experienced many ways of communal communication and getting together online, from Clubhouse to Zoom and from Microsoft Teams to Instagram Live. Many people and organizations have struggled with organizing hybrid events and get-togethers. Others are just tired. Hello, Zoom fatigue. Hello. <laughs> How can we connect on a more intimate level uh, and exchange creativity and enjoy each other's uh, presence online? What are the possibilities of decentralization and collectivity in the digital space? So we will explore this together with our guests of tonight. Yes. Um, maybe it's also good to say that um, we are of course live, so if you have any questions, any comments during the whole show, we will go on until a little bit uh, after nine. You can, you can uh, put them in the chat at any moment, um, so please do that. Uh, we love to have your involvement and your opinion. We're going to our first guest. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is um, Anne Horel. And Anne Horel is a social media artist based in Paris, France. And uh, she makes polymorphic collages, videos and AR filters. And Anne describes herself as a web explorer, contemporary mythology observer, iconographic sampler, performer, singer, tarot reader and plant-based human. She was born in 1984 and grew up with television, video, games and the birth of the internet. And is Anne here? I'm really curious. Yeah, oh, there you are, Anne. Hey. Hello. Hello, welcome. I'm just, um, int we'll int also introduce your work a little bit, if you don't mind already, and then we can show some, some images of it. Because especially for the Overco Festival, uh, Anne, you developed an artwork in the form of a face filter for you to try on, or at least the visitors here. This filter, exists out of dolphins, grilled cheese, hearts and tears, is the outcome of a collective effort. Uh, and you use different elements that other people have gathered and use them to create a collective artwork. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'll go this far because we are here with you and you can also tell us more uh, about that. I think we now see some images of this artwork. Maybe, and it's it's good if you, uh, while we do that, while we're finding the images, maybe it's good to tell us something about how you came to this work. Um, so I I do collage. It's a it's a, a thing. And it's uh, harder. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's, I had needed to be a little bit uh, uh, louder. That's what I'm, I'm trying to say. But this is the technique here, it's not you. So, so please, uh, go on. So yeah, I'm a collage artist. And, uh, and um, the piece I created for the Overkill Festival this time is based out uh, a collective collage people made out of um, the fest mesh provided by Spark AR, which is the free software provided by uh, Facebook to create face, face filters. So this was a giant uh, face on the wall and people had 
uh, various things to glue and draw, draw on. Yeah. Uh, and from this, uh, from this uh, image, I created, um, so this is the, the collective. <coughs> Excuse um, me. <clears throat> uh, and uh, it, I transformed it into a face filter. Um, so I can, I can share my screen too. So I can embody live. You see some different things towards each other, but um, but I think the face, the round face that we just saw, and also the face, the round face, which some there were some. Uh, oh, this is also the face filter. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is the face filter. Yeah. So basically, you you people could draw on the huge face, right? And yes. from that. You made something else. I created this filter. You and created this filter. Yeah. If you can see, I'm, I'm uh, sharing my screen now. And this is uh, the software. The sof software looks like this. And uh, the filter looks like this. So when you open the mouth, there is a, a triangle that is uh, taking everybody into uh, a circle. And then this is this hand tracking thing mm -hmm. also. That creates a kind of like a, a bubble of collectiveness in a way. Yeah. And and how was this how was this different? Because in that sense, then you work also, of course, with a lot of people that have input on your work, eh, in your work. Um, how how was this different than creating something yourself? Um, the process was completely different because usually. I'm in like in my mind, and I'm uh, I'm creating in a th sort of a meditative uh, way. I'm just like adding some colors and shapes, and this is like a very internal process. And this was different because people drew something at first, and then from what people drew and created, I made something. Hmm. So that was different in the in the face filter. Pro uh, uh, process, but collectiveness is something I'm used to. Uh, so this this was coherent with the rest of my work, uh, but it, this process was very specific. To yeah. This. And can we see the the face filter uh, again? Um, maybe the the end result? Because how how did you make? Uh, and I also think it's very interesting that you say that collectiveness is something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you work with a lot, so let's uh, elaborate a little bit on that before. But let's see also the beautiful work you made in the end, the face filter, because it's quite, um, yeah, how do I say, spectacular or something like that. Uh, um, how did you how did you select from this input of all these people? Uh, how did you select these elements? So in the in the the, co the collective collage, you can see some elements that are coming back, like flowers, googly eyes, uh, sh triangles, um, and uh, uh, a lot of shapes and colors. And there's also these giant glasses uh, with sort of wings. Uh, so, and there's this weird yellow fish in the, in the, in the lips. So basically I took what was uh, coming at first at sight, like uh, colors, shapes, uh, items, and then I made it into kind of like a summary, uh, visual summary of everything that was on this um, on this collage. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, um, could you tell us something about the title of this project? Because I thought it was really interesting. Uh, the exquisite, um, uh, Eskis, right? Yes. Can you uh, re it, repeat the title once more? Exquisite. Uh, es exquisite Eskis. Eskis, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's oh, yeah. Uh, so an, an exquisite corpse is uh, a kind of um, creative mechanism that was very used by surrealists by at the time. It made was made popular by surrealists at the time because it makes very. Uh, uh, very weird uh, things like you start a drawing or a sentence and then you fold the paper and then one person writes something or yeah. draw, draw something and then at the end you have 
something that is made of, I don't know, maybe like a, a subjective, like a, a collective uh, subconscious uh, in the same space that is either a drawing or a text. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I remember it from school, like all these papers you have to write, you could say something and then something can draw and then you have a collective drawing basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, and I love when oh, yeah, sorry. Are, I love when things are kind of like uh, poetic, but in a very weird and un unexpected way. Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, I, I would also like to dive into uh, your other work a little bit deeper, or at least also um, the, uh, some projects you did earlier, because we were talking before about the theme of this evening, which is digital togetherness and you told me that uh, you you basically started working with a lot of people on a platform called Vine. Can you tell me something about that uh, perhaps? Because yeah, I think also. a lot of people also don't know it. Uh, it was very popular mostly in the US uh, and then it came a little bit later in, in Europe but it was still a very popular platform and it has transformed uh, social media in such a deep way, like everything that you see on TikTok was basically on Vine at the, at the time. Mm. So Vine was a creative platform. Uh, you could make six second videos looping perfectly. Um, and then you could uh, just like tap the screen and make some stop motion or upload videos. And that was a very cr super creative community I made. Uh, I made friends there, and I'm still friends with them actually, and I worked a lot with them. And back then, uh, I was making, so I've always been a, a gift maker, but Vine was a way for me to put music on top of the gifts. So um, it just like took me into a, a different level uh, of creativity that was a non stop process. And then all of the people I met were like an act of love and just like being so fan of whatever whatever people were doing. Um, so uh, at the time, I, so I, I was making these gifts, musical gifts, and I got very popular on there. Uh, I, but when it closed in 2017, mm. uh, I had like 203, 200-ish uh, uh, thousand followers, which was, uh, which was kind of yeah, a I lot. Love. An empire like <coughs> on social media when you have that much of followers uh, you have work uh, you have people contacting you you have like kind of a credibility that is so important for an artist even though it kind you know it might sign a, sound a little you know maybe mundane or whatever but you know that's the truth um, so uh, when Vine collapsed uh, that was kind of a a hardship. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah, you just I you already briefly touched um, this question, but I would like to ask you what does this digital collectiveness mean to you? What what it mean to me? Yeah, it's family. Like as I said, I, I've met all of these people. I traveled all over the world. Uh, I was in Japan, I met some Viners. I was in Mexico and I met some Viners. Um, I lived in LA and in New York uh, with people I met on Vine. Um, and we are all very affected by the loss of Vine because what we all lived as a community was very strong and very powerful. So we are still connected uh, through this. And we were making like collaborations and sending uh, messages like, hey, what are you doing? Do you like this or do you prefer this or do you prefer that? And it was like a very uh, like enthusiast, creative uh, outfit. Yeah, you even um, uh, did a project huh, with, with about the other, other Viners. I think we also have some images of that. Um, and what I also found really beautiful um, um, when, when we had a, a pre-conversation before this is that you told me that, that on Vine you could express yourself in a digital way and through that, you re because I also asked you how do you meet all these people, you know, do you say just say hi? But you said, yeah, because their profiles were so unique and uh, you just say, hey, I love your work and that is how you, 
how you uh, connect. Is, is that, do, do I say that correctly? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and at the time I was, so I've always been more comfortable uh, speaking about other people's work and being like super excited about people's work instead of just like talking about myself. It's something that I get very bored very easily. Yeah. So I've always been into this process of uh, showing people's work and being enthusiastic about people's work. Like, hey, you have to check this out or check yeah. this person out. It's, it's amazing or whatever. And at this time I was working for Canal Plus, which is a, um, a French TV channel. Yeah. And I was working for a, a TV show that was talking about web creativity and collectiveness. So that was, I was already completely into the theme. And when Vine came, came out, nobody was talking about it in France. And so I, I pitched uh, a documentary project for Canal Plus. Uh, and I was, I wanted to portray 20 people uh, on Vine, and so I made it, and um, and yeah, I sent I sent messages to people, and was like, hey, hey, I love you, <laughs> I love what you're doing. Uh, do you want to meet? And everybody was kind of like very excited. And who um, are we seeing now in the in the images? Is that who? Uh, what what are we seeing? It's Avery Monson. He's a he's actually an author, and he is also. He was very famous on Vine for making like these very perfect loops and nobody knew how he was doing this. There was always like a very crafty way of making things. Uh, like you can see on this one, like how this, did he do that? And it's only in six seconds and it's, it was always super funny and he's still working on, uh, on Instagram. He's still on Instagram and he just released a new book actually. Um, and all of them, all of these Viners are now on uh, Instagram or TikTok or they're yeah, doing... Uh, because but I was wondering, um, you just said that um, Vine closed down in 2017 and um, everyone moved to Instagram, but do you have the feeling that this um, um, togetherness, this community um, is missing on current platforms or has it just moved to Instagram? It has moved, but nothing will ever replace uh, the, the energy that was on Vine. And that's something I really like about social media in general is that on each platform, you have a very specific energy. Like on TikTok, you have a very specific energy that is very, uh, very raw, very, very teenager, very, uh, also very like uh, everybody's people, you know, it's like an everybody's business on TikTok, everybody, anybody can do anything. It's very wild. Um, Instagram is more like uh, very into the frame and very clean and everything. You show the best of yourself. Um, and then Vine was like this art school online. It mm. was basically this. Mm. And it has brought a revolution into um, the format. Like on Instagram, uh, video didn't exist by the time Vine was there. Mm -hmm. And Instagram created the, the video uh, uh, thing because it has to catch up on 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 Vine and then they created the stories they had because they had to catch up with Snapchat. So Instagram is always, you know, reflecting what is going on on other yeah. forms. You could almost say it. that Vine might be the blueprint for Instagram stories. Uh, more, more like for TikTok. It's, it's definitely mm, yeah. the, it's TikTok before TikTok. Mm. Hey, and um, that's, yeah, I think that's really, really nice. Um, and I'm so curious, I, I totally missed this, but um, <laughs> I missed a lot of other things as well. But anyway, um, I'm also curious because you also made an exhibition eh? and um, or at least I think the exhibition was part of the documentary. Um, actually, we, maybe we can show, we, you can tell me something about the documentary you also made. Uh, so the documentary you're talking about is hashtag, right? Yeah. So hashtag was after uh, Vine shut down. Um, so I had like kind of a, a moment where I had to reflect about what does it mean to have so many followers? What does it mean to be, uh, you know, out there and creative, con like a creative person and mm. create content every day that people are seeing and you're reaching so many people? Yeah. Like, what is the point? So I had to step a little bit back and uh, I spent a lot of time, like three months uh, in my apartment, 
so no one i was just like reading and watching documentaries and i wrote a manifesto mm. about uh things that are not okay <laughs> about our society uh and um so that's the documentary uh and um i sent uh the, the manifesto to 26 of the people i've met on social media so it was mainly vine but also tumblr giphy and um and instagram yeah. uh, and i asked them to create a short video uh, with uh, one entry it was a abc thing so there was 26 entries uh with uh like important themes of our society so a is for animal b is for belong it, it talks about uh how you not you do not belong to anywhere and how the, like the the ground identity mm. um cycle and everything so you know, there was a very wide spectrum mm. of what is going on in our world now and i interviewed all of them and created this documentary uh that is uh, 40 minutes long uh and it's uh, putting their work their voices and uh, all of the videos are uh, propaganda videos from the 60s, 50s, 60s, like, hey, look at the progress, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then everybody is like, uh, we have to admit that uh, it's not that wonderful. And it's basically baby boomers uh, versus, uh, you know, us, the grown-ups from today. And like, I like the dialogue between these two generations. Mm -hmm. And then this was an exhibition uh i won a, an art grant it's called the audi talent and it was an exhibition in palais de tokyo in paris and then in marseille uh in at la friche belle de mai mm. yeah i think uh we share the link of the documentary now also in the chat so people can watch it uh themselves which i think is is very great and also i'm very curious you mentioned that uh, what the, the topic of, of this, then you have so many followers, but what do you do with it? What is the purpose? And we will definitely talk about that more in the panel conversation, because right now we also have to move on to the next speaker. Um, <coughs> we will elaborate on that uh, and the, in the last uh, fragment of the show. So please, thank you for now on. It was uh, really inspiring to hear you talk. And please don't go. So <laughs> hang in there and then we'll, we'll see you in a, in a, yeah. in a bit. Excellent. Yes. So the next speaker of tonight is Lilian Stolk, um, also known as the Netherlands' first emoji expert. With her background as an historian and artist, she looks at the new visual language from both a theoretical and a practical perspective. She's also the co-founder of The Hmm, which is a platform for contemporary visual culture. Uh, she writes articles and makes animated GIF stickers and illustrations. Um, and the HUM is a, an inclusive platform for internet culture and through events, um, expert meetings, essays and educational programs, they reflect on online people's, uh, or people's online behavior, um, the latest internet trends and also the mechanisms behind big tech companies and their impact on society. Yeah. Let's uh, look at Lillian's presentation and also do not forget to send in your comments or questions during uh, Lillian's presentation. Uh, you can also do that, so let's watch. Hi, my name is Lillian Stoll, director of The HUM. The HUM is an inclusive platform for internet cultures. Through events, editorial content, expert advice and edu educational programs, we reflect on people's online behavior, the latest internet trends, the mechanisms behind big tech companies and their impact on society. Just like everyone, we had to move our programs, uh, we usually had physical programs, to the internet during the pandemic. In order to align this with our main focus, a critical reflection on big tech, the need emerged to look at the design of events from a meta perspective. We didn't just want to uh, stream our events via YouTube, and instead we came up with all kinds of different solutions. And this actually offered a lot of potential for us as an organization. Through hands-on research, we looked at ways in which people come together online and how group behavior on the internet is facilitated and manipulated. Online programming turned out to offer such possibilities for us 
that we probably never will want to focus solely on physical events again, but will look for a combination of physical and virtual. For our first online event, um, yeah, we really wanted to treat that as an experiment. Instead of opting for one platform, we choose five different platforms. This way we made our research part of the event and included our audience in it. We've invited five speakers to each give a five minute presentation on YouTube, Twitch, Discord, Zoom and Jitsi. And our audience had to jump from one platform to the other in order to see all talks. Um, and when we thought about the concept of this, uh, of this event, we didn't expect this to lead to a form of togetherness among our audience. Uh, but people said that moving from one platform to another really created a feeling of audience as they could see people in one platform that they've seen previous, previously in another. They traveled on the big internet and came across people they've seen before. And one of our visitors also called uh, it a, on, an online pub crawl. It also resulted in a very engaged audience. The chats were filled with people introducing themselves, giving us feedback on the quality of the stream and lots of questions for the speakers. This is actually something that we experienced during all our online events. The chat is really powerful. The interaction is often bigger than during physical The Hum events. Uh, visitors can talk about the topic that is presented by one of the speakers while they are presenting and they share links to reads um, with the other uh, with other visitors or they discuss the topics that are discussed and presented and once there was one speaker who shared a slide with uh, instagram tips tips to follow on instagram which was only shown for 15 seconds way too short to uh, write down all the tips so someone in the chat asked to show that slide again and then one other visitor had copied the slides put it in a dropbox and shared that dropbox link in the chat so the chat is really giving us a sense of a community. <coughs> the outcome of that very first event we did, uh, online event, the HUM in quarantine, uh, is that none of the platforms were really perfect for us. Most platforms that are made for are, are for business purposes and that is something that you noticed in the atmosphere that such platform creates. Um, for instance, Discord, one of the platforms we used, that is a platform made for a gaming community, which also has a very, it has a playful chat. And this was embraced by our visitors. There were lots of gifts sent, which also made the conversations on those, this platform very informal. So it really showed us how the structure of the platform is also influencing the atmosphere of the event when you're organizing something in that platform. So for our second event, uh, online event, we've built our own online platform together with the uh, collective hackers and designers, which has a few things that we find very important. It's easy to use and it's very accessible. So people don't need to download something or log in somewhere to attend our event. They just have to click on the link and it's there. Uh, also participating in, in the chat is very easy. Uh, there are a lot of platforms where you need to have an account in order to participate in the chat, but here you just have to fill in your name and you can uh, start talking. Uh, on our online platform, people are only visible in the chat, so we don't see them. And that is actually something that we missed. We missed a moment to see our audience and talk with them after the event, something that you always do after a physical event. So in the beginning of 2021, we've been opening uh, different online bar environments after each event for viewers who want to have a chat after the event. To create an informal atmosphere, we do not use a standard video call tool that places webcam images in uh, this style arrangement, but we're using a platform called Oye. 
um, yeah, we built in interactive elements and play with elements that were discussed during the event. So for instance, in this bar, the audience could play pin in the tail on the donkey with Bernie Sanders and his mittens. Uh, during that event, one of the speakers will talked about the virality, virality of the meme uh, from Bernie Sanders in the mittens. This was, of course, in the beginning of this year. One of the reactions of uh, from the audience uh, of the Hum in quarantine, so that first uh, hopping event, um, the event that took place on five different platforms, was that it was fun to discover new sites of the internet, that we, we brought them to, to sites of the internet they didn't know. So we thought if we can show people things on the internet, we want to bring them to places that we find important to discover. Big tech platforms and tools um, that are usually places that people already know. And because as an organization, the HUM finds it important to see which alternatives exist. And those alternatives are usually a lot friendlier than the uh, tools and um, platforms from big tech companies. We decided to organize another tour this year, in the beginning of this year, and this time to alternative platforms. So again, we invited five different speakers to give a five minute presentation uh, on five different platforms. Uh, this time we visited Mastodon, a decentralized um, alternative of Twitter, EtherCalc, an open source spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel, Mo Mozilla Hubs, a VR space, Nextcloud, a friendly alternative on Google Drive and Terminal. And in addition to the experiment of the tour, that was already an experiment, is already an experiment to bring people to those places. There was another experimental element this time because none of these platforms were made for presentations. So, for example, in the spreadsheet EtherCalc, we've built a stage for our audience out of different cells. Uh, so we used the program in such a way that it was possible to give a presentation, kind of. <laughs> So um, while our first tour, so from the HUM in quarantine to Jitsi and uh, Zoom and those platforms, that actually went pretty smooth. Uh, but this time, the alternative platform tour, there were a lot of technical issues. During the event, we learned that many of the alternative platforms were, that we used could only handle more uh could not handle more than 100 visitors at the time. Several presentations got stuck and had to continue for, via our live stream platform. But strangely, this again created a form of togetherness among our audience. They did not look in at the linear presentations, but were part of an experience together. So this, despite all the issues, we received many enthusiastic reactions afterwards, after this event. Next year, we're going on a tour again, this time to gaming spaces. During uh, one of the after talks, we had uh, one of the speakers, uh, Reid Berkovic, a game designer, talked about the explosions of game platforms during the pandemic. And because it was not possible to physically hang out with friends, many young people met in gaming spaces. And according to Berkovic, uh, for teenagers, coming together in games feels much more natural than in Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Because during physical encounters, they never sit across from each other and talk. But they always talk while they're doing something else, which actually makes sense. So, um, yeah, we haven't decided which game spaces we're going to visit, but um, uh, the, 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 the way that the game spaces is feeding our yeah, idea of community and being together is something that we are going to explore during this event. 
Uh, I'll finish with some hybrid experiences we did because meeting together online is one thing, but how do you connect a virtual audience with a physical audience? I think this is very challenging and also one of our focus points at the moment. Uh, with the hum, we're convinced that simply putting a camera in a room does not necessarily make an event hybrid. We did this once during one of the events last year, but um, then we got back from our online audience that they felt like they were watching other people having a ni fun night. They did not immediately feel, feel addressed. So how do you ensure that virtual and physical visitors have an equal experience? How do you facilitate meetings between physical and virtual audiences? There are still so many things that we need to learn. Uh, and this is why experimentation is essential at the moment, in my opinion. So that's what, what we are started doing with our events this fall. For example, during our event at MU in September, we made a very literal connection between physical and virtual visitors. We linked every online visitor uh, to a physical visitor, a visitor who were, was physically there. The physical visitors were showing their online buddies around in the Real Feeling exhibition at MU, brought them into contact with other visitors and asked their buddies questions to the speakers. With this event, we learned that it perfectly works to combine virtual and physical speakers. And something that we didn't realize before, some online visitors told us they had a unique experience because they saw the exhibition through the eyes of their physical body. The physical body was not only describing the works, but they also shared their feeling about the work or the smell of the space. Um, yeah, we noticed that you learn a lot from such practical approach, what works and what doesn't, trial and error. There are often things that you didn't, that we did not expect beforehand. So it's really important, it's really important that we under, better understand how we can use the internet to meet others virtually or physically. Not just for the cultural sector, but for all kinds of organizations that organize online and hybrid meetings, such as education. That's why for us, all our experiments are just the beginning. Thanks. Uh, Lillian would join us a little bit later. Uh, oh, can I can I talk to Lillian? For, I just want to ask you one little question before we go to our next speaker, uh, Yin Ai Wen. Um, but um, I just want to see Lillian for a minute, um, if that's possible, of course. Oh yeah, hey Lillian! Uh, hey! hey. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for your really nice presentation. Um, and we're going uh, to talk further on this during the panel discussion with all the others. I just have one question that really struck my mind. Um, mm -hmm. How do you, in this new lockdown, let's say, keep in touch with with your friends and um, and 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 uh, loved ones? Hmm. Yeah, it's a difficult question because I yeah, of course, it's also I also and I also noticed that during our events, like um, we we really also want to hang out physically yeah. uh, after such a long period of lockdown. So um, that is, has my preference still. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I'm, I have my birthday in, uh, in a few weeks. Oh. And of course, I cannot, uh, I cannot invite all my friends at home. So I was thinking about organizing a party via... Uh, oh, I don't see myself in your space. Yeah. I am. It sometimes glitches uh, a little bit, but okay. Just <laughs> um, cool. uh, yeah, there's a program called uh, Distance Disco. I'm not sure if you hear Distant about Disco? it. Distance Disco. That's a good Distance tip. Disco. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's um, um, developed by Klazine van de Zandschulp among a few others, and that allows you to dance. And it's a, actually a dancing game. So you're dancing in an online environment, and you have to guess. That like one of the people who is also dancing is dancing to the same song as you do. Oh my god! 
God, and so other great. here in a different song. So you really have to dance on the song. We all want to come to your birthday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have your email address. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Great, Lilian. This was just a, a few uh, a tiny question in between, but we'll see you at the panel discussion. And now we yeah, move forward. See you later. Thank you for now. We move forward to um, the presentation of Yin Ai Wen. Um, 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 are you there, uh, Ai Wen? Yes. Yes, okay, Hello. great. I will shortly yeah, introduce you and then you can uh, start uh, uh, sharing your presentation. You are a uh, Chinese designer, researcher, writer and video artist. Uh, and Ai Wen, your work explores the future possibility of design that emerge from techno-political climates and interpersonal complexes through performance, installation, writing, video and documentary. Um, I mean, you specialize in turning criticism and theory into design practice, devising new design strategies with institutional instruments that respond to the ever-shifting techno-political environment. And with your keen focus on interpersonal relationship as de-institutional uh, design practice or institutional design practice, she explores new ways of artistic intervention and maintenance through the lens of feminism, queer activism, post-colonialism, and Marxism. Well, that sounds um, sounds very um, um, uh, full, let's say. But I'm also really curious what you uh, what you uh, how you will uh, uh, what you will say in your presentation. Uh, it made me very curious the bio, indeed. So, so just uh, go ahead, please. Yeah. Um, thank you. I think that's like uh, uh, super 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 old file. Oh. I, I'm super, <laughs> it I'm doesn't super fit anymore. curious where you get it. No, it's just uh, it will it will sound less uh, less full. Oh. Um, but either way, uh, either way, either way, like you will hear there's still a lot of uh, remarks there uh, in the presentation. Um, today I would uh, also uh, share basically two projects. Uh, but yes, uh, just like uh, almost like uh, what Anouk said, uh, I came from a design background. Uh, I work uh, as a designer and artist at the same time, uh, mostly because my design work is uh, not quite fitting to the uh, uh, the usual context or the uh, client commission. I usually don't get commission. I create my own work and then I find clients for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, but anyway, but most of my work is sort of, uh, uh, dancing between uh, I develop design theory and I initiate quite a few uh, sort of uh, system design projects uh, with digital technology. I work on alternative economy, social contracts, care, labor, care work, etc. cetera. Uh, but it, it has a trace from uh, what you said there uh in gen uh so in general like my theory inform uh, or inspire uh new practice and then uh the practice sort of like bring me uh bring me new data to test or ask more questions about it and so today i would talk about two projects one is sort of like a theory cluster um and recently being published in uh so far online uh, a singapore online magazine uh, called On Platform Design. And another project is called Reunion Network. Uh, you will sort of like see how they interconnect. Uh, briefly, briefly, it's basically, I think it's also like a quite interesting uh, thing to talk in this particular festival uh, is that uh, On Platform Design trying to explain why it is the contemporary digital environment makes it so hard for us to feel together. Mm. Uh, like the lack of togetherness mm. and how, how does that happen? And uh, sort of uh, reunion network is sort of uh, trying to turn it around, like uh, sort of like a, it's a different approach to blockchain technology and so sort of digital currency in order to find togetherness in the yeah. sort of in the midst of global capitalism and all that crisis mm -hmm. that we have. Um, but briefly, I would sort of also show like a, in sort of like a, Oh, uh, so that like the first piece of my entire career, but it's still very much uh, working uh, for the whole context. So I will play that. Welcome to the plugin system. 
Your injured body has become the burden of your digital soul. In the world of Sire of the Capital, everything is soft, fluffy, um, gentle. Ivan, we cannot hear the video. Oh, um, so maybe the uh, uh, I send out the video, then maybe yeah. you can play it from there? Yeah, we will play it uh, right now. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the plugin system. Your injured body has become the burden of your digital soul. In the world of cyber capital, everything is soft, fluffy, gentle, fulfilling. They change you so quietly that you thought it's your choice. But you need this massage. Through others' hands, it reminds you that you are still human. You are more than the electrical signals from your neurons. Your communication with people is more than a faceless P2P transmission. The massage is the medium. Yeah, so um, this is a quiet and early work. Uh, maybe we can switch back. Yes, thank you. Uh, so this is uh, sort of like the uh, the work is starting eight years ago when I graduate my master in the Samber Institute in the Netherlands. Mm. And uh, it, it sort of like it begins my whole quest about whether the design can work differently other than working for the mass, working for the mass production, working for the mass communication, etc. Can we actually turn it turn it into specific relationship to to think about like how communication working in time in over a course of a relationship, because in my view is that the so the whole mass communication, which uh, has our digital technology or in general technology uh, in place that sort of uh, sort of like it tend to see individuals, uh, users, uh, consumer and our product all at the same. Like it's basically the same that the, the image that you see that we all in in the eyes of design that uh, we always assume that the people in the same category will somewhat like the same thing, will somewhat uh, do the same thing, etc. That's sort of like the like how the basic model that uh, our current design methodology sort of assumes, and it's it has a lot to do with the demands of capitalism, but it doesn't really it it. it really isn't the only way that we communicate with each other. And, and then uh, my argument is that this kind of design, design ideology, like that everyone is somewhat under the same, uh, can be categorized, can be understood as, a, as, a, as, a, as basically a group of stat uh, statistics. Uh, it's, it's really providing uh, or contributing strongly to the alienation that we feel in the contemporary society. Mm. And especially in, it, it's sort of like render in how digital technology has been designed in such way. So uh, these platform on platform design series, basically uh, 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 20,000 20, words of, uh, uh, of uh, dissemination, like dissecting how starting from the very early internet where we actually find alternative space to gather, where uh, I personally find a lot of connection when I'm a kid, uh, uh, probably like we, we probably all sort of like experience the early internet quite differently uh, comparing to how we experience the internet now. Um, so I always wonder why and how and what's the role of design in here. So these platform design uh, essay is six chapter that starting from uh, part one that I talk about how the internet is organized differently comparing uh, now comparing to the previous stage. Uh, if we all recall in our past, uh, our previous uh, internet is actually organized around interest group, subject center community, that's how I call it. And then now, uh, which is like subject center community, sort of it sort of used to sort of share interest to together around people. People come together with a shared purpose, with a shared understanding or interest in, in certain topics. So in that sense, we have a shared context. However, in the today's time where uh, this trend of persona driven platform, where we all present ourselves as individuals that a certain kind of persona with a sort of kind of like um, 
sort of like uh, a given kind of structure of like how we should be. It, like I think it's very interesting what uh, Anna said earlier that like different platform had different kind of um, sort of vibe, sentiments, etc. Because we sort of like under the persuasion of a uh, platform, we sort of like all crafts a certain kind of personality uh, that is fitting to the platform kind of sentiment. And so uh, in the first chapter, I sort of trying to discuss how this kind of econ economy and the, or the weight of organization change that led to this, uh, what I call in the, la in, in the last section in this chapter is like the disappearance of vibe like the disappearance of a, a vibe being like the sense of togetherness uh, has disappeared because we all being disseminating into this kind of uh, individual persona where we actually have to compete attention from each other instead of uh, sort of trying to bridge uh, relationship with each other. And, and on, on, the second, on the second part is that they've used RSS technology. I don't know how many people should notice that that talks about how sort of like convenience, the sense of convenience is uh, working at the, the on the very basis of uh, uh, how internet evolved to today to today's scenario is that like when we tend to make things more convenient, we also delegate uh, delegate a lot of communicative labor uh, that uh, that which is actually very essential to our to building our relationship, and when we delegate all that labor to platforms, we also sort of lost our relationship with each other as well. And I actually see some chats in the in the zoom, uh, but I'm, I, I don't know how to open it. So oh, no, you don't you don't have to open it. Just ignore it. Yeah. Just okay, to, great, proceed, great, great. Just, proceed. Very just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, and then in the in the third chapter, it also further the idea of con uh, convenience, but it also used Facebook and and, uh, and Apple as an example how they also like respectively in the critical moment of uh, of the expansion of communicative capitalism, they contribute different aspect of uh, design minimalism. It sort of like create it sort of make sure that minimalism become this kind of uh, central ideology in the design of every digital platform is sort of assume that um, this kind of like as long as you make sure the design is minimal enough where people doesn't need to think doesn't need to like it, it sort of like displace this uh, this kind of idea of uh, if a product is easy to use it's slowly shifting to a product uh, like the user is being pushed out of the, the, the sort of like decision making, you know, like it, 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 they starting to uh, they starting to claim like, oh, you don't want you you don't want user to think too much, and then your story becomes like reading this uh, into a different way, like users uh, cannot think too much when we're using uh, any digital software. So how that sort of like, of course, like at the beginning, it's very important for the expansion of communicative capitalism because you want more people to get easy to, to join any kind of platform so that they can expand. Mm -hmm. But then over the course of that kind of process that we also being kicked out from any kind of decision making process because we, are, we assume that we don't want to think and, but of course, we want to think, especially when digital technology becomes very central kind of infrastructure for our everyday life. We want to be able to participate in our communication within uh, meaningful relationships. We want to be able to foster meaningful relationships. But uh, at first, we delegate the communicative labor to people, and then now we don't have the right to design our communicative uh, labor, and then and then in return we don't have the right to own our own relationship, mm. and so like and of course it also like have the kind of problem in. Uh, I'm still having this other three chapter, but I quickly just go through them. Like the uh, they are still uh, publishing, so uh, if you want you can check it out as well. In chapter four, it's sort of like further the idea about like how our kind of creativity also being 
uh, streamlined in the platform aesthetic. So it goes back to what Anna was saying earlier. Why is it every platform has certain kind of vibe, uh, has certain kind of, because we have it, it, like the whole platform architecture is being designed in a certain way that persuades us like, uh, from uh, about how to present ourselves. What's the most uh, beneficial way to present ourselves uh, to get more likes, to get more followers, etc. And and then in chapter five, it, I sort of like uh, talk further on how then after all this, uh, the internet becomes this mega architecture architecture of loneliness. I will expand it later. Mm. And then in chapter six, I propose sort of like designing a relationship driven or relationship centered design internet is important for us to find a way path, a pathway towards a communicative. Uh, oh, sorry, I typed it wrong. Uh, I want to I want to move towards a communicative communism, if that's ever possible. Mm. So um, that's still on work process, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about, like among chapter five why it's like the scripted. Uh, uh, why it, why the internet becomes this architecture of loneliness? Because the, the the major problem of the current digital space is that it designed on this kind of alienated model. Uh, maybe some people would know about this term user centered design in the digital uh, uh, design, and the idea of user centered design is basically starting from this idea of a rigid a speculative analysis of the of a, sing, a single user with the assumption that each of to be alone. So if you see the kind of like user journeys, it seems we stuck. have a technical problem and we cannot hear you anymore, Ivan. Hello. Okay, are we gonna? How long this will uh, <laughs> will take? I have no idea. No, you. <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> <coughs> well, in the meantime, I'm I'm coughing. Was there anything that was noticeable for you in the I went presentation? We just uh, we just wait yeah. a minute until we. We have see uh, connection. We have a back. connection back. Oh, maybe. Oh, so maybe it's a connection thing. default. Maybe we're not connected anymore <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah, it fits the theme, right? Um, Oh okay, yeah, we maybe, also said maybe. that we would embrace messiness, digital clumsiness. Yeah, well, well, and here we well, are. Well, here we are. <laughs> it, it totally, it was totally scripted. The flaws are scripted, like Lilian was talking about as well. Um, maybe it's also good if um, we go to our next maybe presenter until we have. Uh, I the went back. One? Yeah. Um, do we have a, still a connection with Martina, which is our next uh, presenter, or we don't have any connection anymore? <laughs> We also have nothing to see anymore. <coughs> I'm just thinking, like, based on Iwen's talk, if we can have um, platforms that are not based on profit. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And and what could, yeah. could we have a future without big tech companies to yeah. get on, together online? I would love to ask Iwen later. Yeah, well, if we can, yeah, if, if that's possible. Because yeah. that is also what we're talking about and during this whole, I think, panel um uh, the three chapters we also had before Sorry. is about expanding this notion of identity um but also about um querying the body uh or whatever that is. okay oh yeah i went you're back uh, yes. we lost you are you do you hear me i went do yes, you hear I me i am yeah i'm so sorry we lost yes, you there was a technical default Miss, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it was you. <laughs> it was you? Yeah. You lost, okay. Hello? Maybe, maybe it's good because we're a little bit also in, in the time, but that you resume your presentation 
uh, for, for another uh, five, five minutes, if that's okay with you. You're stuck again. We are digitally, officially yeah. digitally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're here. Okay. I wanted to say digitally not connected uh, anymore. Disconnection. <laughs> Digital disconnection. <laughs> anyway. Oh, this is something else. Anyway, I'm in. <laughs> He's still here. <laughs> I mean, please. Well, anyway, what did I want to say was that we're talking about freedom, you know, other mm -hmm. identities, but we're constantly, that is facilitated yeah, by exactly. these companies yeah. all, you know, profiting yeah. from, our from our labor. Clicks, from our, our labor. labor. <laughs> that was what I was saying, of course. Yes, now, yeah. exactly. It is very, I think it's very necessary to talk about yeah, this. Absolutely. To how do we can create different structures of inter... Mm -hmm relating yeah. and communicating instead of uh, and i think there are much more possibilities i i, I hope so yeah. i really like this platform also from lilio yeah with that you're like a flower and stuff yeah. like that i like that too. and i also think it's very inspiring that you have yeah i just keep talking because i think people are fixing stuff are people fix thick fixing stuff yeah i <laughs> Sorry? I also said that Oh, well, that's a pity. That's a pity, uh, I think, because uh, Iwen was saying very uh, important yeah. things. Iwen, is it okay for you to maybe wrap up your presentation quite shortly? Is that okay for you? Because um, I think yeah. you, know, you made a very uh, important contribution. We were just talking mm -hmm. about it. I don't know if you heard, uh, heard that. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, I would love to hear that. But uh, yeah, actually, uh, actually, just bridging to what you said, like um, uh, I, the second project that I want to that I want to talk about, reunion network, is actually trying to find different ways to design digital technology for togetherness instead of for uh, alienation. So um, maybe maybe uh, we we can play the second video that I sent. Yes, play uh, the second video to show like how that was uh, being created. Yeah, please. Can we uh, play we the second video of uh, I went? That would be great. Yeah. Thank you, I went. And then maybe you can tell us a little bit about that because this reunion uh, network uh, is really uh, interesting. I think. So it do is not hard keep to us stay grounded in yeah, our sure. atomized and efficiency-driven modern yeah. lives. The fast-paced lifestyles of our society make it difficult for us to become a haven for one another. Evolving technologies have led to longevity, but they have also amplified anxieties for aging communities. Love and company have become tasks amidst the flurry of independent lives. Elderly abandonment is no longer just talk on the street, but rather a foreseeable reality. Freedom now comes hand in hand with loneliness in the metropolis. We don't have to live like this. Reunion Network sees caring relationships among people as the cornerstone of a sustainable society and takes them as its premise to design a future society of care. With this vision, Reunion Network has designed a digital app made up of a currency system and an economic model. When integrated, these elements create a virtual social system. As you join Reunion, the first relationship you create is the one with yourself. Oh, that's great. This is a relationship that will accompany you all along the way. Within this self-relationship, the reunion system will remind you to reevaluate your commitments when you may be too occupied with other relationships for you to take good care of yourself. We can only have healthy relationships with others when we are on good terms with ourselves. Equally, the system will remind you when you have many relationships, but not enough time and energy to maintain each of them. These mechanisms are here to help you keep a balance between your own health and that of your loved ones. After creating a relationship, you can add activities to it. Every time you send out an invitation or complete an activity, the system rewards you with personal tokens, PTs, which are always connected to your first relationship, the one with yourself. These personal tokens are non-monetary. Rather, they represent the value of your care work. You may create many relationships or simply initiate new activities in existing ones. To create a relationship, you may send an invitation and accept requests from others. As you provide and receive care, 
the personal token of each person in the relationship is organically combined to make unique mutual coins. Mutual coins are connected to relationships between two people. Mutual coins can be used to purchase products and services as long as both persons in the relationship consent. Mutual coins are generated only when your relationships enter into the second or third contract stage, CS2 or CS3. In the reunion network system, there are three stages to describe a relationship. What do the stages signify? The first stage can be considered when you have a trusted friend with whom you exchange favors from time to time. With this person, you may consider formalizing your relationship to be a first stage relationship in the reunion network system. Your relationship with yourself is also a first stage CS1 relationship. There's no financial bonding at this stage. A relationship in the first stage only represents your willingness to take care of each other and record your activities. In the case that you want to take a step forward and develop the relationship further, with the interest to count on each other more substantially and make more commitments with one another, you can choose to develop your relationship by moving to the second stage. At the second stage, both of you will need a modest monthly financial deposit to validate your respective personal tokens. The deposit will be saved into the account of your relationship as mutual coins. The mutual coins are the unique collective fund of your relationship. At the same time, you will also be rewarded with extra personal tokens, according to your records of activities. In this way, you and your loved ones develop more mutual coins from your active caring relationships. Certainly, no relationship is stagnant. Even our relationships in families change as time goes by. With this in mind, there is a checkpoint in every relationship created. The checkpoint provides an opportunity for you to review together and look forward together. If the original relationship contract still reflects the expectations you have for your relationship and for one another within it, then you may extend the relationship. If the expectations have changed, then you may change it according to your discussions. If you do not wish for the relationship to continue, you can easily end the relationship contract. Of course, you may also choose to upgrade your relationship to the third stage, CS3. This development requires you to have six friends in the second stage or third stage relationships who may collectively validate your relationship. When your friends have validated your relationship, your local welfare institutions may review your application for their support. Your relationship enters into the third stage once it is approved and the financial validation for mutual coins will be paid by your local welfare institutions. Your third stage mutual coins can be used to purchase products or services in local co-ops in order to help the financial support and the maintenance of your relationship. Through this provision, your local welfare institutions support your relationships in local small businesses at the same time. This development of local economies will help mitigate economic migration and establish more stable connections around you. Additionally, if you or your relationship partner are moving away from your shared locale, your relationship does not have to end. As long as both of you want to maintain your connection, your mutual coins will still be valid in both places. This makes the opportunity for your local welfare institutions in small businesses to collaborate across districts. In the meantime, residents, businesses, and welfare institutions collectively construct a translocal care economy in support of a caring, prosperous, and sustainable future. This is how reunion will help you hold on to the beautiful and strong connections in your life so that you and your loved ones can stay with each other and support each other for longer. Thank you. I went, I think this is a very valuable, uh, valuable um, add to your presentation. I do have to say, let's talk about it further in the panel yeah. discussion because otherwise yeah. we're really running out of time. Um, yeah, so sorry so, about that. But we will that. definitely yeah. talk further, so don't go away. Uh, right oh, now, I, we want to go to Martina. Is Martina here? This is our next presenter. Uh, maybe we read, uh, read uh, yeah. her yeah, bio. I can yeah, introduce Martina. Um, so, artist Martina Stich is interested in the entanglement of image, gaze and technology. Point of departure in her work is the photographic image. While using the medium and also moving away from it, she researches its role in the perception of reality. 
Martin is also the creator of online platform We All Go. And We All Go is a new way of meeting online. A playground where you can create your fluid identity. And uh, we will experience this all um, right now. Right now, in just a few minutes. Um, Martina, you're here. Martina? I'm here. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I just wanted to ask you, are what are we going to do? And how do we also instruct uh, uh, the people? Or we do that later? What? I'm, I'm following your lead. There are links in the chat, so yes. you can follow it. It's going to be streamed, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that that what was what we discussed. It. I'm in the we all go to the environment. <coughs> but it's not streamed yet. Yeah. Uh, can oh, yeah, see exactly. It. So uh, we see the links now. So you're going to take us. Oh, there oh, you are. Yeah, there you are. Martina. Yeah, because you yeah. made a platform. Yeah. yeah, okay. I was just searching for you. Um, <laughs> but I found you, I think. Um, that's great. Uh, we will come too, yeah. right? Because this is the platform. We are now in the we.elgo.org. We this is, this is a website you made, and, um, or a platform at least. And you will take us through through a little tour, right? Uh, if I'm uh, yeah. if I'm correct, I will also go to the website. Who are the other people? I'm the red one. Oh, you're the red one. You're fast, Monique. I'm just chatting, chatting away. And where's the other? What? Where was the other person then? Maybe someone from uh, outer from space the, from the chat or. Uh, oh yeah, because the. Oh yeah, wait, I put out my sound because otherwise it gets really messy. Yeah, you have to... Can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, good. Ah, oh, I see it. And then YouTube. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. This is the We All Go So yeah. this is... Uh... Oh, I can't hear you anymore, no. right? Sorry, Martina, we <laughs> we're trying to be together, but maybe it's what Lillian said, you know, like if we have a little bit of stumbly thingies, then maybe okay. we, yeah, we can get more can together. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hello. Yeah, but I if I mute you now. this one, because I... <laughs> I hear you, Martina. Yeah, please continue. I think this is great. I, this is me, like the blue mouth talking. You see? You say also something, Monique. Wait, yeah. Oh yeah, that's you. Who are all these other people? They're from the audience maybe. Uh, anyway, so cool. All right, please um, proceed, Martina. I think we can hear you now. No, we can't. Do the sound via Zoom. Can you hear me now? Now yes. I can hear you, yeah. Then, then I hear myself double. So. So hello everybody, this is a nice space. So this is We All Go. We created this in, the, in the, the first quarantine, basically. Uh, I make it together with the staff, Coleman, Thomas van der Wansen, and Ron Nobach. And uh, there's some echo going on, eh? <laughs> Oh, oh, really? Uh, I hear myself two or three times, I think. Yeah, this is um, this is the environment. I will first learn how to navigate. You navigate with your nose, make small movements. When you point your nose to the right or to the left, you can float through the space. It's meditative. You are oh, you are all stuck on the on the <laughs> on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Oh, Let's float. You can float through each other. I see it. Yeah. Great. And you can while while using it, you can change your uh, your mask. It's just like a mask ball. You're there. You're present, but anonymous. So I'll lead you through it. You can. 
<laughs> you c uh, Lily, I'm, I'm, I went. Are you also here? So if you push this button, like the edit button, you you go to a third a sort of dressing room and you ah. can change your face and yeah. also your voice the, this one. The you can also change the background i will do that mm. oh, yeah. story nights So basically, it's a, like well, it's not really an alternative to uh, to Zoom or to Teams or to whatever, but it's more like a, yeah, a, a fun platform to to meet anonymously. You can create a room so you can like meet up with friends, but you could also go to the lobby. That's basically the public space of We All Go. <coughs> and how did you get this idea, Martina? Like, where did it originate from? Yeah, well, it originated basically. I'm a trainer as a photographer, so I was researching the the, the transitions uh, in the the medium of photography, photography from analog to digital, and what happened. And well, I stumbled upon well machine vision. We don't have the monopoly of um, uh, seeing as uh, human beings or. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> people and animals. So, um, sorry. Yeah. Well, I got fascinated by the the graphic language that uh, that that came into being um, by the use of um, uh, machine vision. So the yeah. so well the biometry, but also like the well uh, the the object detection and with the the colored stripes and dots. And um, I thought, what would happen if you would create a camera that only could capture what machines see? And um, oh, I was playing with this idea, and then came Corona, and then like, why, why won't we um, try to find a, a way to meet online as a well, digital avatar. So we we used like biometric technology uh, or create maps. So well, what, what that's what's here now. You basically based on the sixty eight facial landmark points, you can create your own mask. You can draw it and you can change it, and so you can well basically be who you want to be and. Uh, and meet online, unbiased and fluid. Yeah, it's it's, uh, yeah, it's really nice. How does it too. feel? It, it feels so good. <laughs> I feel like my head is floating in a in, in space. A, yeah. In space. Yeah, and it helps, also through uh, you, through each other. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. I still feel very connected. I mean, right? How does how does it feel for you? Man? sensitivity, yeah, like uh, sensibility. You can like really kind of. Play, you have a totally different experience than being in the grid of Zoom. Yeah, exactly. Can, did, uh, I really want to invite the other uh, speakers to join us to, for this experience. Lillian uh, and uh, Iwen, are you also here? And Anne? Uh, who are you? Huh? Anne and Iwen. Oh, but we don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm curious. So we don't know. Maybe that's that's the wrong question to ask. Who who is everyone, right? That's well. That's like inappropriate. <laughs> in we all go, <laughs> but, uh, oh, but still we do the, it. The rules. Okay, I'm stuck in the corner constantly. No. So, oh yeah. Yeah, but you have to like when you move, you know, a little, little bit like oh, yeah. tiny movements. Oh yeah. So you can do a little bit up. You float up and down. You float down. Let's. Practice. Let's practice, Yay. yeah. Up. Let's go up, all up. And down. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> wow, it's like I'm in and a roller coaster, up. yeah. Or <laughs> stuck in a car place. I don't have any Wi-Fi. So just, we we are very curious, like what we did with the Overkill Festival. What was like, 
asking participants to, uh, well, to participate anonymously, people to have a conversation on WeAlgo, uh, which is uh, really nice. Of course, you can immediately ask, who are you? But it's also nice to not know exactly. Yeah, because how uh, did your, what did you do exactly on the Overkill Festival? Yeah, we, um, You're, you keep falling away, uh, Martina, that's a little bit sad because I cannot, uh, sometimes I can hear you and sometimes no. I can't. Is this us or is this, no. This sound is really, uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, difficult. I think there are people like in one room with an open mic, right? My my microphone is muted. Yeah. Um, should we maybe um, all go back to Zoom to have the panel because otherwise <laughs> we won't be able to hear each other? Yeah, exactly. I think that's the best, Martina. This is this is beautiful, but I do think we all have to go back to Zoom because otherwise we don't have. We have still 20 minutes left, uh, and it would be a waste to not talk with you a little bit more. Is that okay? That's what I mean. I can't hear anybody <laughs> anymore, but this was a beautiful experience. We yeah. go back now to Zoom. But the other people can definitely stay in the... Um, we all go. In the we all go. So, is everyone back in the Zoom? Yes. Um, are you back? Ah, oh, my God, <laughs> everybody's back. <Yay. laughs> okay, I that love this. Experience. That was an experience. <laughs> that was a great experience. Martina, it would be also great if to, we can see you. Uh, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. no, in real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, no. I don't like that no, anymore. No, but this is exactly, uh, I think, Lillian, you might recognize something from this experience, don't you? Sorry. Oh, you're, what? you're muted. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, that you Going moved from, from platform, platform to platform uh, and go yeah, back yeah. and forward. And it was, uh, you know, it, it's... Uh, did you know this platform from Martina? Yeah, yeah, I, I know it. Uh, I also had a meeting in it um, a few weeks ago. And it indeed was very funny that we... Um, because, like, the intention was not to be anonymous. <laughs> So indeed, we try to describe our avatars, and it also was quite difficult to keep remembering who was who. <laughs> uh, that's a fun experience, but I really liked it. Yeah. Also, the abstractness of it was uh, works really well. Yeah. Hey, I went. Um, you also, I think, Martina and I went. You really made the, this. You made really made a both an alternative huh? in in the digital space of of how you could come together. So I think that's very interesting. How do you view this, um, uh, this we algo as in, in also your research towards um, the platforms, uh, your research in, in terms of coming together and how they steer us to come together? How do you perceive this, yeah. this we algo uh, in that sense? Yeah, I, I really like it. I think that uh, it's actually, Touching to the part that I didn't manage to talk through the internet, uh, that I was talking about how the digital software nowadays or platforms nowadays is designed so that like without a shared context, right? That include like a shared interface, a shared visual environment. Because like for instance, now we are all in the Zoom meeting, but we don't know what we are actually operating from our end. Like we are all responsible for our own interface and then we don't have a shared consensus of like what is happening uh, at the same time. We don't see each other's actions. Uh, like, I mean, like I, uh, I am opening my chat in there, but then you won't see what am I, what am I seeing. It was sort of like started with this idea of uh, privacy, but at the same time, the lack of consensus of what is happening at the same time sort of makes that kind of alienation is like further. But what uh, Martina is doing is basically trying to suspend all that, suspend all that kind of different interface and then put us in the same kind of abstract uh, ambient mm -hmm. environment that like we're starting to share this kind of confusion mm -hmm. and uh, this kind of 
I, I really actually love that kind of, I, I wrote it like, I love this uh, echo opera that's happening at the same time. So like, we sort of in this kind of um, share confusion, share context, share environment at the same time. So we know that we are on the same page. Mm. And that is actually what is missing most of the time in the current uh, digital platform where we don't share uh, consensus on the very, very basic of like, what are we doing at the same moment, right? So uh, yeah, so that's my brief uh, response and also just trying to put a little bit back of what my what my uh, talk is about. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, uh, Martina. Uh, I, I really love the, the experience. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, really nice to, uh, yeah. to you to be yeah. there with all of you. And it's, you're right, it's an equalizer. It's like we, everybody can be uh, whoever he wants to be. There is no difference in, um, mm -hmm. well, uh, you know, um, age or like uh, bandwidth or um, it's all exactly. private as well. So it's peer to peer, so it's not stored or shared. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah uh, I think that has, yeah. Yeah, um, um, are we there as well? Um? Yes. Yeah. Uh, were you also in the We Go? <laughs> no, I wasn't this time because the, the link wasn't working. So I was just floating by myself. Oh. As... <laughs> How was uh, that? Yeah. I, I had the experience yesterday with uh, Ines, Ines Alpha, who is also an artist at the at the Overkill, and uh, we are actually friends in uh, in real life. So that was funny. We were like, "Hi!" Uh, and then it, there was this awkward floating moment and then we realized that we were both French and then I was like oh so you're Sandrine and she was like no I'm not and she was like you're Anne I'm like shit you know who I am and uh, <laughs> and then I was like oh my god you're Ines and then we had a like a, a very casual conversation floating and we were feeling that we were kind of like living in the life of fishes you know <laughs> like what are fishes talking about when they are floating in their aquarium you know and we were having this like Fishy just conversation like, yeah and very floaty conversation it was very nice actually i really liked it mm. i love this tool it's it's great it's great it looks amazing i was just wondering um reacting on what i win just said but also um martina maybe um do you think that because everyone becomes sort of the uh, sort of equal appearance in we algo um a floating face does this help with the feeling of digital togetherness? Mm. I, yeah. in, who wants to answer maybe that? Maybe Martina should yeah. answer first. Martina, well, yeah. it's the, maybe it's nicer if you answer it. I think I think it uh, it it does it does um, brings you closer, just like a masked ball, you know, like you can yeah you can pretend you're somebody, but you can also be very honest, you know. Like there's this quote, give a, give him a mask and he would tell you the truth, you know. Mm. <laughs> but I, yeah. yeah, I don't know, I but maybe I, I'm very curious, Ivan. What, uh, how... Yeah, I think I think uh, it almost so that it brings us back to the very early internet where we sort of had this idea: internet brings equality because we don't we we suspend our bodily appearances in the early internet, right? Uh, like uh, we, we have this kind of early kind of document uh, documentation about how people talk about like uh, on the internet I'm not I'm not only a black person I'm not only a woman I, I'm only I'm, I, I can be only human and I can talk to people with this and that and I think the problem with our current uh, digital economy is that like it tries so hard to duplicate our off offline or uh, mm. like quote unquote reality. Mm. They're trying to duplicate that kind of hierarchy and uh, mm. and the kind of relationship. So it's sort of like, it stopped being the space for possibility and then it also doesn't open up new new windows for us. So, at, uh, and, then, and then the suspension is no longer uh, there for mm. us to sort of like being able to find alternative way to connect to each other. Mm. So I think this kind of experiment is actually very important to bring us back to this kind of a very early phase of like how digital uh, technology was 
a, a, a window for possibility and then why did we lose it and then what it means to bring it back now and then it has to build on top of uh, this kind of existing hierarchy and and etc cetera, etc cetera. sorry i'm rambling now no 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 i uh, i agree with you indeed uh, yeah. Arwen. Uh, yeah. what i was thinking as well like now we're in zoom and we're in all in separate boxes here and in we algo where we're literally on top of each other mm -hmm. and already that mm -hmm. is a form of togetherness almost you know yeah exactly and uh, um yeah i also think that that you yeah you're a bit anonymous and you can also edit your mask yourself mm -hmm. the fact that you can design your own environment a bit is also really important and missing in all these anonymous like or i mean uh, not anonymous but these zoom and um uh, microsoft teams all these tools that are actually made for business but now are used for uh mm. hanging out with uh, people mm. um yeah, yeah. We, we 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 lost the agency um that like if we we uh, we have a room we also uh, decorate it in our own uh, in our own taste and with yeah. posters plans um, yeah I think that is like a, a bit maybe what you meant also with the early internet I uh, yeah know. I think uh, if I can use city's yeah, website you yeah. you could uh, design it yourself and it was really a space from someone that you entered yeah. when you when you get yeah i i think that actually uh the the current internet will only work in the context where we already know each other very well mm. uh, like i all like uh, me and martina all also teach in the same school actually and uh we we run when we run into the corona time then you immediately see the difference when you teach like second year you already met so it's slightly easier when you tutorial them via teams right but then in the new student it's such a disaster because you don't have an existing relationship to rely on uh so that to supplement that kind of uh loneliness and emptiness of the zoom and, and teams uh which is like this kind of uh, software that really deliberate design for like like Lillian said is for business and what is the business like kind of sentiment of the relationship, right? We are independent and then our relationship is, is strictly transactional and, and need to reach certain purpose. So you have this kind of Zoom boutique where like you're there for a purpose and then when you finish the purpose, you should leave. Otherwise it become very awkward, the meeting. And, and then, but like in the, any meaningful relationship, you actually wouldn't like your, your encounter doesn't necessarily end with a specific purpose you don't crave for a outcome when every time you meet and i think we algo is actually quite interesting like the whole setup so that like that kind of like doesn't have a designated purpose like you just hang out there mm. it's just a like floating fish mm. and that idea is very interesting like so that that kind of like lack of purpose is actually very critical for togetherness mm -hmm. that like how we feel to be able to have this kind of togetherness is like we we are able to be together without transactional purposes mm -hmm. so that's that's a, a important thing to yeah to, to think about too. yeah i was just wondering um i am because you just said um um on maybe do you agree that the internet now uh, only works if you already know each other in real life um, can we still meet new people uh, online like you experienced with vine for example yeah um i mean people are real behind the screen you know and uh when you have a crush on someone artistically or intellectually there is always a way to meet this person or interact with this person. And even if it's just like liking their content or interacting, commenting, sharing, it's already creating a link with them. Uh, and then uh, I, I feel like the way we meet each other is also transmuting and we are actually meeting way more people now than we did before the internet exists. Uh, because we have access to so many people, like literally in there, I can have access to the entire planet that is 
connected and all of this I like the idea that on all different platform you have a different kind of being you know as I was saying earlier that each platform has its own energy so I feel like we are all different kind of avatars and we're showing different parts of who we are depending on the platform and so it's always I like the digital form of beingness because it is showing something that people will never see when you meet in person. Mm. And there is always, uh, you know, uh, a decalage between who you are in person and who you are online. And when you meet someone uh, in person, there is always a moment where, you know, you don't know entirely the person until you see what they're doing online. You know what I mean? Which sounds uh, like, if you were saying that maybe at the early stages of the internet, I would thought that would be crazy, you know, but now it feels completely normal. And mm. uh, like the way we meet each other has completely shift. And um, I still meet people from onlineness, like every, every month, like every, and each time it's I, I'm never wrong. Like each time I meet someone in person that I had a crush on, uh, <laughs> Sorry. On the internet, <coughs> Sorry. I'm never I'm never disappointed. Like never, it never well, happened. Well, this is also uh, funny, of course, because on the one side the internet also pushes us, I think, to stay in this bubble, mm -hmm. uh, the famous bubble, which we're talking about all the time. When when vote when Trump was elected, I was really like, what? Who's voting Trump? Well, they were not in my bubble. But and the, on the other side, uh, the internet also gives us so much possibilities to meet people. And uh, this is also, I think, where you both are talking about uh, in terms of what you want to push with the platforms that are now uh, available. And Yin, you also made this reunion app, of course. Um, hmm. uh, and then you formalize this kind of relation, or you push, you push these relationships. Eh? That is basically how I little see it a little bit, or you produce them. And I thought hmm. this was also very interesting. I thought it was also quite queer, actually, because you also institutionalize them in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. If you have enough credits yeah. with somebody, then you can also go to the municipality and be like, hey, we belong together. You know, we have a yeah. form of relationship instead of this heteronormative like marriage kind of not uh, three parents yeah. available well whatever yeah. you know what i mean anyway yeah. so yeah can you elaborate on this on this uh, relationship app a little bit more yeah uh totally uh, importantly uh this this app doesn't work to produce new relationship it's only there for formalizing existing relationship um so uh it basically is the like like you said it's querying but the like and then it's trying to sort of uh complicate the idea of family and marriage uh, uh as, as the beginning point mm -hmm. like uh yeah. the um, the idea of i like uh, i i want like i want to come back to what what and and say earlier to connect to my coming points like, so that that makes it easier uh, what I, uh, I think the differences with the early internet and uh, and, and, and now uh, is that the early internet starting with like when you know people you know from a shared interest you you like each other's content or you like it like the same thing and then you discuss it together you make exchanges so but uh, what happened before that is that we have to get interested in something right so uh, like that that finding out what we are actually interested in is the process of finding out who we can be outside of the, our mundane reality. And then in the early internet, we have this kind of possibility where we explore who we want to be, can be, and potentially can be, and then, and then understand that through the constant exchange with other people that have the shared interest. Mm -hmm. And that is very important in 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 how early internet being this alternative space for us to build new relationships meet new people and but in the current platform will be much harder because they start with asking who you are yeah. before you select any kind of interest and community right so you first put in your so the so-called real life identity before you can meet people so that is sort of like already setting up that kind of uh, heterosexual, like you can say heterosexual or like this kind of like normative idea of what relationship could be. 
And that for me is also like how digital infrastructure work as an institution that normalizes mm. the heterosexual relationship. Mm. And so what reunion trying to do is to remind us that actually in our everyday life, even uh, beyond digital space or whatever, kind of we, we, we actually be, be uh, accept uh, kinship, blood-based kinship uh, and marriage, we have so many meaningful relationships outside mm. of these two relationships as well. Mm. However, those uh, relationships be always being considered informal. Like we, at best, mm. we call it a friendship, but then we cannot rely on them with a perspective. We can rely on our friends in the present moment, the company, like as long as we agree or like each other, as long as we live in the same city, uh, our friendship is dependable, but no, nothing further. And that is like the kind of informal relationship that is lacking the institutional backing. Mm. And that with reunion, we hope to provide that kind of institu institutional, institutional backing way, yeah. for this kind of wider spectrum of meaningful relationships. Yes, and, Again, and, and we, most, I'm most sorry to interrupt you because we're also yeah. a little bit in time, but it's very yeah. interesting what you say, but also most, most, most first and foremost, um, if you don't love yourself, yeah. who the hell are you going to love somebody yeah. else? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So the, the app also start with this like self relationship, right? You have to first love yourself, and then it also work as the safe belt. You cannot overly add relationship mm. because meaningful relationship takes time. Yeah. And you also need to take time for taking care of yourself. So that work as a safe belt. And then on top of that, you have meaningful relationship. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically, it's also the idea of like if we have more possibility in uh, in having meaningful relationship with ourselves, with perspective, with our future, then uh, our identity would not necessarily be trapped into this like uh, normative, like heterosexual kind of uh, normative identity. We'll be able to. Draw more possibility outside of our uh, family, kinship, class, race, all that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. We actually have some questions yeah. also from uh, from the chat. Uh, question from Matthias, who joined us on Monday, actually. Oh. Um, talking about the internet as a system of togetherness. What do you think about the current transition to Web 3.0? What is Web 3.0? Let me look it up. Yeah. I know Web 1 and 2.0, but I... <laughs> maybe the digital knowers know it. Lilian, maybe? Blockchain. Oh, yeah. blockchain. Ah. blockchain. Yeah. Let me oh. see. So... Mm, Who wants to answer that? Is anybody up for answering that? Because I, I don't know so much about the Web 3.0. <laughs> I, I can, but yeah. uh, I think I talk too oh. much. <laughs> Well, yeah, um, maybe... I <laughs> love what, yeah. what you're then saying, maybe Lilian. Maybe you can explain what it is. Lilian, please. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, yeah, so, uh, uh, do I have to explain? Yeah, so it's blockchain based. Uh, I can give you one example because I was wondering about this and I wanted to ask a question um, or maybe a similar question to uh, Yin because it's uh, related to her reunion uh, project because it's also blockchain based, right? Yeah. Hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, an example is, for instance, you now also have DAOs, that's decentralized anonymous organizations, and it's also blockchain based, and that's, um, that is like structuring that um, a, a, a lot of people are like the owners of an organization, uh, and it's regulated by a blockchain. Um, so you can start an art project and you mm. can say, okay, it's DAO based and then people can just become, uh, yeah, uh, owners of that art project as well. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, an interesting direction. And I, I also think it's quite, because we've been a few years on these massive platforms like social media platforms, uh, and uh, of course, the CEOs of these platforms are envisioning a future where it's even more, even bigger, like the metaverse. Um, but I wouldn't think I, I would, I would, 
I can imagine that we feel more comfortable to actually um, have smaller communities again. You also see a lot of Discord communities uh, popping up now where you are together chatting with a small group of people about a specific topic that you're interesting, interested in. And um, yeah, maybe the, the Web3 is also uh, uh, part of that direction. Um, but I, I'm also curious too what Yin uh, has to say about it because I think you're... Yeah, I, I'm quite involved in that, in that conversation. The, I think the biggest issue with this transition is that there's too many obsession of the concept of decentralization itself than, than, than talking about what does it mean to do so like to, to our social and everyday life where people obsess with uh, with the, the formalization of decentralization as if it's taken for granted as like right and, and righteous and futuristic. And but in what I experience is that in the design process, though, in every small design decision making, uh, people were still referring to, oh, this is how things work in reality. Mm. But I think precisely is that there's so many things that we don't want our current reality to come into our future we want <laughs> to steer it away mm. and then but that wasn't being questioned mm. and just like most of the digital design projects is that there is lack of uh, theoretical underpinning to talk about why do we want decentralization why do we want mm. to duplicate everything into a new generation of technology mm. we we want that not because we just want a new generation of tyranny and and uh and and just like <laughs> uh, I, I it's not that people want a new mark Zuckerberg have a prettier face or something it's like we want we want something different and then but what does it mean that we want something different what is that different thing uh i think that is more important to talk about instead of just obsessing with like oh decentralization must be good no sometimes decentralization can be really bad it means that people can get out of responsibility mm. and it means eventually no one is responsible for anything mm. and things are slow and then uh, the, the the gas is burning etc mm. etc and we have to get get through every step in details about what it means that we, when we're making design decisions, mm -hmm. what, we, what it means that when we organize people in certain ways. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't particularly depress or, or optimistic about, about Web3, but I, I think there need to be more elaborate thinking behind it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we also had a question because, um, well, actually, I, oh my, yeah, my God, you, you're asking so much question. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, where, the, where should we go? What should we do? Why should we go there? Um, yeah. um, but you're the absolutely important right. Question, though. Sorry? Important question. Why should we go there? Why should we yeah, go Yeah, and the where should we go? Want? And exactly. where do you want to go? Where do I want to go? Yeah, I mean, well, well, f in the digital space, in the digital realm. But let's say, like, how, 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 where are we going in ten years? Where, yeah, what are, what future are, what's the future of this digital togetherness? If we can just speculate on, and we have saw, seen some examples of where we could go and how we could interact. How would that? Uh, what, what would be characteristics of a, of a, of a, of a platform that, or a, a form of togetherness that you would want? Well, I'm jungling between being very optimistic and very pessimistic about human race. Uh, so moving forward into 10 years, uh, I feel like before we find uh, some kind of balance in the digital realm, we might need to find a balance in the physical realm. But you cannot divide both of them because we are mirroring, you know, and the, the digital realm and the physical realm work together. So you cannot dissociate both of them. And actually the digital realm is, a, is really helping into raising awareness in major issues in today's society and the global society and uh, specific topics that are like, can be very tiny, can be very specific and can be very wide and very big. Um, so 
I don't, I have zero idea of where we're going digitally. I'm super excited about the blockchain system for crypto art because as a digital artist, I've been posting art my entire life on social media and for free. And instead of posting stuff, now I have like the label of like posting art that can be bought, which is a huge different as, difference as an artist. But you know, talking about like a metaverse or something uh, like a 3.0 web, it's going too fast and too, too further away from where we need to be now, which is like already super intense. Mm. So I'm kind of like, I can be optimistic, but for now I'm like, I don't want to be excited about too many things because there are so many things to think about and instead of being spread out i'd rather be concentrated on everything that's happening right now and taking things Slow. after and after and after you know yeah all right yeah that's clear martina where where should we go I'm not such a digital person. <laughs> you made a whole digital platform. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No. Uh, I, I, I really think that we really need to learn to, to, to speak another language and to, yeah. to uh, meet in a different way yeah. uh, online, to really get used to it, to not to mimic real life, but really embrace our um, newness or yeah. our other way of looking and meeting and uh, be courageous in that yeah so well that's a beautiful that, answer i i also like during this whole talk i was like opening my, my mind like oh my god there are so many possibilities mm -hmm. to meet and to be and i'm just my mind is like whoa whoa you know lillian where should we go i mean you have a platform it's 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 quite big you you're doing a lot uh, with the, with internet culture it's very inspiring you must think about where we should, where you want to go in 10 years, how we should evolve in that sense. Oh, you're you're sorry, muted. I'm muted, sorry. <laughs> I also find it very difficult. I'm, I'm not, I really don't want to be in a metaverse designed by Meta. <laughs> uh, I also think we should come up with a different name because it's already branded by uh, Facebook right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah, and but I, I also see what uh, Yin said, that it's really important that we should look at these systems and design it in a way that is not giving, like we shouldn't have the similar power structures as they are yeah. right now on the, uh, in the internet. Yeah, um, just, yeah, sorry, sorry, go on, and, go on. Yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah. Uh, I also think we should learn a lot and, and we should try out things and do things, but try to come up with different solutions as just use Zoom and Microsoft Teams while it's so convenient for us, but, or try to hack them or, or use them in a different way, but uh, try to like own it again mm. ourselves. So not, uh, yeah. I have just one last, or do you have another? I just have yeah. one last question. Because now I really want to like surf on the we algo or, but this is also the point and we were, Monique and I were actually talking about it in the, in the little break again. Like how can you not be on a capitalist big company platform, right? Should I, this is also my question. If I should want to start tomorrow with, with redefining my different identity online and making more, social relationships, should I go off all these platforms? Should I hack them or should I mm -hmm. make an alternative? I went, please enlighten me. <laughs> I think, I think, I think you just, you should just move on. Just live your life. And then don't like, I think that the main, the main problem with the digital technology is like they always like, at least in the current ones that we have is they all really want to be in charge of our lives. So if you look, don't let them, and if you instrumentalize them, instead of letting letting them instrumentalize you, then 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 you have your freedom. And I, I think the problem is that our current economy is led us to believe that so much so that we need to rely on digital technology to explore uh, who we can be. And then we are in in an economy that 
uh, relying on network effect to amplify our voice to to validate our values uh, within the society, and we should we we should really uh, stop believing that, and we should really believe that it's the meaningful relationship in our everyday life to define us. And uh, whenever we need, we can instrumentalize this technology, and then they have no place in defining who we are, etc. So eventually, it's not about it's not about quitting them because quitting them also means that you have to cut off with all the people yeah. that you met meaningfully online. And why? You you met them, you own the relationship. Don't let the platform own your relationship in, in positive way or negative way. It's it's our life and then we should just live it. That's all. <laughs> okay. Well, at least I will I will uh, start in we all go. Yeah. Just like <laughs> random, be like floating. Yeah. Feather, yeah. and also to download the reunion app. That's uh, yeah. that's available, right? I went. I think those are good places uh, to start. And of course, go to the meetings of the hmm, um, mm -hmm. and then we we evolve together yeah. from and there. Yeah. You can yeah. still visit here the exhibition with Anne's face filter and also the original work um, yeah. that mm -hmm. are still here. Um, also mm. important. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and also. Um, after this, at oh, yeah. 10 o'clock, uh, there will be a live stream from Timo Hoogland on the YouTube channel. And Lamb Kebab is performing on Twitch. And our lovely Niels will put the, the link in the chat. Oh, yeah, there's more togetherness right? after yeah, this. Just stay. Just yes. don't stay. Okay, <laughs> I want to thank you all very much for this wonderful conversation. Anne Aurel, uh, Eivind Yin, and uh, Martine Stich, and Lilian Stolk. Um, yeah, this is probably just the beginning of a much larger conversation uh, that is ongoing, uh, definitely in these Corona times. Exactly. Um, thank you, yeah, Monique, thank also you so for your yeah. collaboration. Yeah, also thank you so much, Thank you team to the whole team. Kill. Yeah, <laughs> Marie, Niels, Patti, everybody, Aida. thank you so much. And um, yeah, tune in again at, at yeah. 9.30, right? Uh, 10. 10? No, 9.30 it says here, right? Oh. Lamp kebab. Oh. Lamp yeah, kebab. that's at 10.30 and Timo Hoogland's at 10. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, bye everyone. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, have a nice evening. <laughs>